continuing from the last uh, lecture, so we had this example, calculate area of the plane z equals to 2 minus x minus y over the portion of unit disk in the first quadrant. We drew this plane and we drew the part of the plane that is above the portion of the unit disk that is in the first quadrant. We, in last lecture, also saw this is the formula we're going to use. Uh, we're going to integrate this quantity over the region to find the surface area. So let's go ahead and do that. So, you know, your f, f sub x here is minus 1 f sub y is minus 1. So this, so this is going to be the integral over this uh, region r, call this region r, of 1 plus minus 1 squared plus minus 1 squared dA, right? So this is the integral of square root of 3 dA over the region r. I will not yet set up the limits of r, you know, as a circular region, I have to do that. But I notice that I can uh, pull out the square root of 3, and then I get the integral of r dA, and this thing is just the area of the region, right? The area of the region over which you're integrating. The area of the region, this is one quarter of a unit disk, the area of a single, of a, of a circle of radius 1 is pi, pi 1 squared, right? Is uh, pi. So, this one would be pi over 4, so this is equal to square root of 3 times pi over 4, okay, this is the answer. Let's do another example, slightly different, not that different. Um, calculate area of the plane. This is actually uh, problem number 15 in the book, in the exercises of 14.5. Calculate area of the plane. Let's read, let me write, make sure I write this correctly. This is z equal to 24 minus 3x minus 2y over the, uh, the area of the plane in the first octant. So this is now a slightly different problem in the sense that what it is saying is you have this plane, this plane is a, okay, the value at z equal to uh, x and y zero is 24, and if uh, z is zero on this side, x would, y is zero, then x would have to be eight, and here it will have to be 12. This plane in the for octant, we're talking about the octant, right? One eighth of a space where the x, y, and z axes are positive. In the first octant, they are all three positive. In that in that part of the space, this plane uh, only has this triangle in there. The rest of it is going this wall, this wall, and going into the floor. So now we are being asked to find the, the whole area of this thing. Well, what is the region R here? That's the main question. The region R is actually this whole triangle, because this plane is over that whole triangle, right? So the region R, if I were to draw it in the xy plane, is x equals 8 and y equals 12, is this thing, okay? So how do we do this thing? Let's uh, do this. Our function is 24 minus 3x minus 2y. So let's calculate the partial derivatives. So f sub x is minus 3, f sub y is minus 2. So we'll do the integral over this region D, let's call it D, over this region D of the square root of 1 plus minus 3 is squared plus minus 2 is squared. D A. Much like the last time, this is the integral of the square root of 9 plus 4 plus 1 is 14. So this is the square root of 14 D A over the region D. Since the integrand is a constant, you can pull out the square root of 14. The square root of 14 times the integral over region D D A, which again is going to be the area of this region. So the area of this region is a 
triangle of width 8 and height 12. So 8 times 12 over 2, so it's 48. So this is 48 square root of 14. Okay? These two examples were not hard. Uh, the integrals were not hard at all because this quantity luckily turned out to be a constant. Constant because the functions were linear, so the partial derivatives are numbers only. So these were constants, pull out the constant, then you just have to calculate the area of the region. If the area of the region is one of those nice triangles and circles and rectangles, you, you know how to calculate the area of the region without having to do the integral. Okay? But this is not always going to be the case. Let's look at an example here. Um, Calculate, let's erase all this thing. Calculate surface area. the paraboloid, the circular paraboloid, z equal to 1 plus x square plus y square over the unit disk. Okay? Now what's happening here? You have this unit disk. And you have this paraboloid, it, at uh, 0, 0, it starts at a height of 1, so up here, and then after that, goes up like that, with a circular cross section. So calculate the surface area of this function, uh, of this surface, uh, I mean, this paraboloid goes on forever, but we just cut it here over the unit disk, we just cut it off there, so calculate the area, uh, surface area of that ball, right? Okay, so when we do the partial derivatives here, let's look at how the partial derivatives look like. The derivative with respect to x is 2x, and this is 2y, right? f of x is the 1 plus x squared plus y squared. So you get here 1 plus 2x squared is 4x squared plus 4y squared, okay? This integral is not easy now to do. We have these squares inside the square root, but we don't have the, if we do the substitution x squared, then we don't have the, you know, the, the, the if u is x squared, then du will have to be 2x, we don't have the x outside. So we don't know how to do this integral, plus the limits, the d itself is the circular region here, and its limits are, you know, the circular limits are uh, not, I mean, they're not hard to set up, but they're not like also very conducive because then you have a square roots here, a square roots here, depending if you do dx, dy, dy, dx, whatever. So, for these things, of when you have integrals, and especially over circular regions or something like circles, these integrals will be easier to solve by changing them to polar coordinates. Uh, you will recall that we did uh, cylindrical and spherical coordinates, I mean, Polar coordinates, you did them in calculus 1. We'll change these integrals, uh, we'll change the coordinates to polar coordinates and then do this. For this, we have to wait until we can do the section on polar coordinates and other change of coordinates. And then we'll come back and do such integrals. The, in the next portion of this uh, section, 14.5 lecture, we're going to see why this formula makes sense. So that will be our last thing to see.